section of the town or state you live in. You will have a one-time opportunity for five minutes. I'll try to give you a one-minute warning, uh, not to interrupt you, but at least in case you wanted to wrap things up. All videotaping must be taken in the rear of the room in a designated area where someone is set up now. Again, you have five minutes. We ask that you uh, be kind to each other, and we are now open for the public portion. <laughs> Shwari B. Rajan, uh, Edison, New Jersey. So at the last council meeting I attended, I shared the story of a mourning mother and her eight-year-old daughter, Ella Kissy Deborah, whose listed cause of death was pollution, to ask you to please oppose the proposed KSB power plant. Five minutes up here uh, go by pretty quickly, which is why in all of this, I feel like I wasn't able to properly introduce myself to you all last meeting. So hello, council, mayor, and fellow members of the public. My name is Ashwarya, and I was born and raised in Edison, New Jersey, but I'm a student here on summer break from college in Maine, studying environmental law and policy. I remember driving home, I remember driving down home from school about two months ago and physically seeing the air get hazier as we got closer to New Jersey. This was of course exacerbated by the Canadian wildfires, but I realized that it held true all six road trips I made to and from Maine these past three years. As someone who suffers from asthmatic symptoms, I notice myself being able to breathe easier up there. Perhaps that comes from the often better air quality due to a lower concentration of pollution generators, or maybe because I feel freer from the weight of having to advocate for our basic human rights to clean air. Maine is nice, but I really love New Jersey. It's my home, and it's why I'm here today. I love Woodbridge. A fun fact about me is in seventh grade at the Woodbridge Community Center was where I first learned to rollerblade with my friends. With these fond memories, this township holds a special place in my heart, so if I come on too strong, it's because I care. It's because our county's ozone pollution rating is already an F. It's because if approved, the expanded KSB power plant would be one of the largest climate polluters in the state of New Jersey, affecting every person living in Woodbridge and Middlesex County. It's because there are 3,000 people in our county alone who had to make asthma-related emergency department visits in 2019. It's because 5.2% of Woodbridge's population does not have access to health care, which I know is a different issue, but by that virtue, it's more than 5,200 people in Woodbridge who do not have access to health care, who cannot afford an emergency hospital visit, who physically cannot risk the existence of this plant. It's because the stakes are so high, otherwise I would not be making this ask. I understand that the last CPV plant replaced a radioactive site, and that is great but Mayor McCormick also questioned whether the public would rather have, quote, pollutants from a clean, a clean natural gas power plant or flakes of radioactive material in the air they breathe since nothing is as bad as radioactive waste, end quote. According to, my, according to a My Central Jersey article published earlier this year. So I ask you, why should your town be put in that situation in the first place? Why should they be forced to choose between a horrible outcome and a slightly less horrible outcome? Because that gas power plant as stands is not clean. Don't your residents deserve to have that radioactive site cleaned without having to barter for it? Your residents have already been paying the price with Colonial High School's contamination, and they've been paying the price in Woodbridge's air cancer risk being 250 risks per million, while the state is at 88 and while the county is at 100. I'm not placing any blame, but I'm asking you, isn't that enough? You say the pilot program for this plant quote, eventually will result in savings of about $150 per year over, per house over 30 years, end quote. I don't believe these contextually relatively small amounts of money are worth sacrificing the public's health. You note that there are, quote, few homes in sight of the plant, end quote, but air pollution does not cater to municipal or mild borders. While it's many, whether it's many or few homes in the area, the quality of the air those residents are breathing matter. Woodbridge is a successful hub for economic development, and as a result, there are tons of businesses around the CPV power plant with people who also do not deserve, who, with people who also do not deserve to breathe polluted air. In my opinion, no amount of economic development benefits is worth sacrificing our public's health for generations, especially when there are many feasible alternatives to meet energy demand and economic benefits. For the sake of our commitment to Woodbridge and to the municipality's public health, I respectfully urge you, the council and mayor, to oppose the proposed power plant, and if not that, at least put safe measures in place to prevent it from further harming our people in town. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments? <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Good evening, Council, Mayor McCormack, uh, and other people here. <laughs> My name is Esther Barkin, and I live in Edison. I'm also a Woodbridge Township retiree, having worked for 18 years as a geriatric social worker. I was here last month and was interrupted and my time cut short on my cell phone going off. I am here tonight to once again urge Mayor McCormick and Council to revisit the plans for a second fracked gas power plant in Caseby, which would be the seventh in the limited geographic area of Middlesex County. I urge you to withdraw plans for this fossil fuel plant and consider revamping the project to make it a clean energy power plant or scrap it all together. We all know, and you all know, much more now than you did a decade ago when the plans for two gas power plants in Caseby were developed. The damages that we are witnessing daily to life and property on a mass scale across our nation and throughout the world from raging fires, floods, mudslides, hurricanes, drought, and the dire effects on our ecosystem and biodiversity as a consequence of climate change cannot be denied and is the result primarily of burning fossil fuel. Why then would you want to build something anew that contributes to the problem, a problem that is causing so much death and destruction and how fitting that you gave homage to the people in Hawaii caused by climate change. Then there are the toxic pollutants that are emitted into the air that we are breathing in, not just Woodbridge Township's air, but my air as well, and the air of tens of thousands of residents in our neighboring towns, many of which have come out against the power plant project. Breathing in toxins like carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, sulfuric acid, nitrous oxide, formaldehyde, ammonia, volatile organic compounds, and the 2.5 microns particulate matter that lodges in our lungs is like putting your face behind the tailpipe of a gasoline-fueled automobile and breathing in the exhaust. How many of you would do that willingly? How many of you have a family member with asthma or with cancer or high blood pressure or cardiovascular disease? We know that breathing in polluted, polluted air makes these conditions much worse and may even contribute to their onset. I myself have recently been diagnosed with lung disease. I have never smoked. It scares me to know that the air I am breathing in may be killing me. And government officials who have the power and responsibility to protect the health and welfare of residents are willfully failing. Pursuing this enterprise, I believe, is misguided and negligent. Please do the right thing. Insist that this plant be a renewable energy power plant, which this company has done in other places and use science as your proper rationale. As Lee Tomlin said years ago, and that's the truth. Thank you. Are there any other comments from the public? Yes, good evening, uh, Council President, members of the Council, Mr. Mayor, everyone else who's listening. Thank you for the acknowledgement of the wildfires in Maui and the horrible destruction that it's caused, uh, as has been alluded to. Many times at this microphone, the climate crisis is leading to more extreme and dangerous weather. And uh, we've experienced consequences of that already here in terms of the air quality this summer. And uh, I just think it's really important that we have a dialogue. And so I wanted to ask, can you respond to the residents who spoke earlier? Okay, well, I, I hope they'll also be heard here and I hope that you'll take them to heart. I wanted to ask a few questions if you don't mind. Uh, I know uh, in that same area there's a proposal for a waterfront park. Can I get the status update on when that'll be open to the public? We're uh, working actively on it now. Parts of it may be open in the fall. 
The bulk of it will be open next year. Okay. Um, is the site still radioactive? Has it been remediated? It will not be open as a waterfront park if it's radioactive. So presently it is still. Is that correct? No. So it has been remediated or it hasn't? As far as I know, yes, it has. The spot that's going to be the park, as far as I know, has been remediated. Okay, so there'll be a portion that will be a park and a portion that is still contaminated. Is that correct? I don't know. Okay, well, I think that would be critical information for the mayor and council to have, and I hope that I can help you figure that out. Um, I also have to ask about competitive power ventures and their atrocious plan for a second gas plant in that area. Council President, does the council have any comment on the air quality violations of this company's first gas plant? No, other than that, the, I am sure that the DEP has to monitor it so that the pressure is really on them. We don't monitor the air here in the township, so. I, yeah, I, I, are, are you aware of the nature of the violations, the extent of the violations, the I crime of the violations? No, I am personally not. Because okay. it's my understanding that they were self-reported by the company and DEP took several years to take any action. So I'm very concerned that for years, uh, these violations were kept from the public. And, you know, folks were making arguments, oh, this is a great company, they got a perfect track record. But it wasn't true. They had violations. And, uh, you know, I would like to get to the bottom of that, understand how such a thing could happen. And I hope that you would share my desire to get to the bottom of that, since those violations may have affected the air that we were breathing. Um, the, the mayor stated in the past that he's been able to meet with and persuade so-called green groups that oppose the plant get them to change their position. Uh, through you, Mr. President, could the mayor please address that and name any of those groups that uh, have decided to support the, the gas plant? Well, they've made right, so the recollection of ever having done that or saying that. You don't recall saying that? Okay, well, it was in this room, it's on video, and, and I'll follow up to, to get some more detail. That was said here. And I just also have to ask if the council has any comments on the guilty plea of Ray Kelly, the CPP executive that brought the first plan to Kingsby. No comments. I don't know, council, anybody? Any comments? I don't have any comments. Okay, well, similar to the air quality violations, are you familiar with the, the nature of the charges? The, the, well, you what have he brought it up in the past in, in a, you know, done a little research, so yeah. Okay, just one minute, by the way, brother. Okay, thank you. And just to clarify, he was the person who came to Woodbridge with the offer, right, to break the power plant here? I, I personally wasn't part of that, so I, I don't know if anybody else cares to comment, but I, I wasn't part of that discussion, so. Okay, well surely the mayor was involved, perhaps through you the mayor could comment and confirm whether Greg Kelly was the person who brought the first plant here, or came up with the idea, proposed it? He was not. Okay. He, he was not. Can you tell us who was? The mayor, mayor said he was not. He was not. Okay. Can, can you tell us who, who did? Whose idea it was? No. No, no, because we don't know, or no, because I don't know. Right. There's just a lot of red flags for this project, so I encourage the council to take another look at it. I know that when we first started bringing this up, folks' ears perked up, and they were interested in maybe sending a letter or doing something about it. And uh, I think that kind of, you know, went away for some reason, and I, I don't. I think the discussion needs to continue, so I thank you for, for hearing me out today. Thank you, Charles. Are there any other comments from the public this evening? Good evening. I'm here for the third time as the problem was not resolved. If you remember the dance studio, on King George's Road, I mention every single time has been approved without going in front of the board. So all the protocol to be approved as a business was not enforced in this situation. None of the township rules, regulation, ordinances are not reflecting there. Just to mention recently what happened, another incident, 
middle of the night, a lot of noisy, jump toward the window to see what is happening. Eight cars are leaving from that parking lot. It was a birthday party. So, one hour later, was only one car left in the parking lot, which is the owner doing cleaning. Since they have only one garbage can and only one disposable, again, it's a business, it's using residential garbage cans. They've been overflow. The owner decided to put the garbage recycle in her SUV and drive it on the other side of my property. One is on the left, one is on the right. So on the right, it's the fourth lawnmower, the husband. So at 1.30, in the middle of the night, she's throwing the garbage because she's very short. Every time she will throw something, we can boom, 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 like it's a kind of drums. I am like, okay, what about me? I need my sleep. There is a township ordinance, call it quiet time, 10 to 7. We all know about it. Next day, <clears throat> I sent an email with videos and pictures to prove it that it's not a makeup story to Mr. Logan from the housing department. Going back and forth, back and forth, he was dodging the answer. And he finally said it. I cannot enforce the quiet time on your situation. Why not? Why am I the exception from the rules? Because when this business have been approved, I make a parenthesis by their own attorney who works for the township, Mr. Rogoff. So that should be a conflict of interest. However, did work for them. Nobody say anything from the township so far. What happened? The explanation is when they've been approved by their own personal attorney and the township attorney at the same time, they've been approved with no hours of operations. That means they can operate 24 7 and I have to deal with it. Another issues, there are plenty, plenty, but I'm going to stipulate very, very short because last time you, you cut me off. The light is supposed to be up to 10 feet. They are 30 feet up, and I have to deal with it. Their business side is supposed to face facade. Well, there are exceptions from the rule, it's sideways, and I have to watch it all night. Um, their parking lot, based on the township ordinances, on a commercial parking lot, it's facing a residential property. There has to be a buffer, wide five feet among the property line. Well, there is nothing. If I want to go in the backyard, it's impossible. All the lights, I feel like I'm an actress, are projected on my face. I'm just a normal person. I need my privacy. I do pay taxes like everybody else. I cannot enjoy my backyard. I have small dogs. When they are there, and most of the time past 10 o'clock, no now because of vacation, my dogs have to do it on the pee pee pads. Why? If I let them outside and all the craziness that's happening next door, they will start barking. And I, do, I want to be a nice neighbor, not to bother others but this has to be addressed. Okay, thank you. Okay, one more thing. Is up, You can certainly send us an email. I don't know if anybody I did. Wants to I did to everybody, including yourself. Okay, and I got I it. I got no answer. No one has communicated with you. No one, you're saying, no one from the township has communicated with you. Yes, I even sent an email about that. I sent to Miss Marta, and she said, oh, who's been approved? Would say. Okay. Okay, one question. No. Just one 
have your shot. You don't have any, you have, you have your five minutes, that's it. Yeah. That's fine. You're welcome to come back or send another email. It's, it's good time, and they still have an answer. Are there any other comments this evening from the public? Paul Lund, Hope Lund, good evening. I'm seeing today a, uh, the results of a Monmouth University poll uh, stating that 77% of parents in New Jersey believe it's appropriate for middle schools and high schools to notify parents if their children want to identify differently from their gender assigned at birth than their school records currently show. Uh, I want to find out, since we do have um, Assemblyman Coughlin here and uh, interim County Superintendent Anderson here, uh, what they're going to do to stand with parents, at least let them feel that their voices are being heard. I do know that the boards of ed uh, of four different towns so far uh, are being sued by the state attorney general just for adding a little more guidance to their transgender policy to notify parents with certain carve outs if there's any reasonable suspicion that it might lead to a hostile uh, response from said parents. But short of any actual evidence, most people reasonably believe parents should be involved in life-changing concerns, decisions uh, along those lines. So again, the question is, what is, is the legislature doing to rein in what some people consider administrative overreach? And on a local level, uh, what is, what is the policy? Um, I know that, that Board of Ed, again, has to comply under threat of lawsuit, but uh, would Mr. Anderson be willing to stand with uh, Assemblyman Copeland, who did speak boldly about parental rights? Second question I have for uh, Mr. Anderson. Um, if your daughters were in school today, and they're, they're past K through 12 in, in either grade school or secondary school. How would you as a parent feel that a boy who simply states that they are a girl without any clinical proof can use the girls' bathrooms? How would you feel if your daughters were in that situation where boy, biological boys could use their bathrooms? Uh, last thing I would add is um, I wasn't planning to talk about environmental issues, but when I was uh, studying environmental science in school, uh, there was a distinction our professor made between environmental science and environmentalists. Environmentalists are often very passionate, but not necessarily according to knowledge. I happen to, uh, to believe that the plant, that, that the air is cleaner now than it was 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago because of improvements. I believe that uh, there are standards that have to be met. And I also know that a lot of the particulates that are of concern, especially the finer particulates can, that can be breathed deep within the lungs, are ending up 300 miles downwind. We're breathing in Ohio's air. And uh, so the idea of environmental justice, where it's, there's a plant placed in Casby and it's going to have adverse health impact and death and mayhem locally, it just doesn't ring true for me. So I want to see a little nuance in that conversation. Thank you for your time. obvious things here that um, that Mr. Coughlin is here as our legal counsel and Councilman Anderson is here as the councilman, not necessarily a superintendent or an assemblyman. With that said, I'll leave things up to them. But as you know, because you're, you're well versed in these things, Board of Education has had the ability to make these decisions following state guidelines. Uh, we recognize it's a very sensitive matter, but that needs to be worked out for the Board of Education. I would simply say thank you, uh, Council President. Uh, Mr. Lund, I've, I've spoken on the issue you, you cited that. I would submit that we should speak uh, outside of the Council Chairman. This isn't, a, this isn't a meeting to talk about what the legislative process is, but rather talk about matters affecting the, the Township of Woodbridge. So I, I would think that. I'll hand it back and maybe we can just set up that time. Thank you. Are there any other comments this evening from the public? Good evening there, by John with Daddy Goodrich. Uh, I was away for two weeks, I, uh, but again, when I came back, 
I was made aware of it, <clears throat> and uh, excuse me, by Grand Woodbridge Club now, there's a tall sign erected uh, on the property, and I understand uh, there was sign before there, and I don't know if the, anybody knows about it, but 2002, 2001, there was a sign over there which approved, I didn't want to read the whole thing about it, it was approved by the, the uh, Falcon Media LSC, made application to put a billboard sign on the, behind the club, which is that time occupied by the Polos brothers. At that time, they had a permit to build a two-side sign, 10,000 feet, square feet each side, a 63 feet height. My question would be, what height is the sign today? I understand the sign was 63 feet, and then two weeks ago or something, the sign was put up additional five feet, and be 15 feet is now 78 feet. And let me read something about it. If this is true, did the thing go out front of the zoning board or anybody to put additional 15 feet at the sign? Well, in 2002, the billboard was erected, placed during the fall of 2001, approximately 60, 60 feet height. It was around this same time that owner of this billboard was transformed to the next media outdoor. Shortly before that, whenever 2000, February 9 and 10, 2002, a large construction crane came up here at a billboard, and on weekend, they put additional 15 feet to 78 feet. At that time, Mayor Pass was a mayor, and people, were, they said because he couldn't see if a turnpike, they needed a hire. At that time, there was a question about the safety of the sign. So what I did was I talked to architects, I talked to the construction people, and I thought, what do I know about construction? But I thought just put additional concrete around the stump of the sign, it's safe to put an additional 15 feet. Every builder, every architect that I knew would say it's not safe. So I went to Mayor Pesman, I said, Frank, I said, this is a situation. He said, well, it's a court. It's in the courts. I said, but do me a favor, go to the zoning board, find out if this sign was built for 78 feet or just 65 feet. It tells you right in a town hall. Less than two weeks later, sign was down to 63 feet. So my question is today, was the sign just put the head to it or did they go put a side of a construction bottom up? Because they say it's not safe if it's more than 63 feet if it's not designed for 78 feet. And how it's done, did this, I guess we need a permit when the property is owned by the township now. I think we still got to think about the safety of the people that will attend the uh, ground area. One minute. Please. Go ahead. One minute. One minute. Okay, so I just want to just please find out for safety of the people. Again, uh, a lot of things were said to be about the pollution. You know, it looks like we only do that for money. We know it's wrong. We all know it's wrong and not supposed to be done. But we do it because we're going to make some money on it. Let's take care of the people what they want, what they don't want. If you run out any kind of thing, people will not approve the things to get a couple million dollars because safety of the people. So please think about citizens in this town. Again, uh, Mayor, I want to tell you what people talk in beauty salons. They want to know what happened to the bridge on the Carter's Duck Road and uh, Fulton Street that's supposed to be built, finished, repaired, and across the uh, road, I mean, the uh, railroad tracks. I understand the thing is still closed, never was finished. The second question is, Mayor, people want to know, 
what, what does any, what does anybody, your family or you own a liquor license or liquor business in Woodbridge? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. So President, uh, the, what's happening here is there was a static billboard for years. We decided that it would be more lucrative to have a digital billboard. So we made an application. We now own the Club of Woodbridge, which means we own the billboard. The Carzoni Board approved it, and the state approved it. It's a very long, difficult process dealing with the state bureaucracy. Mr. Picard, once again, is talking to people who clearly don't know what they're talking about, and neither does he. Instead of talking to the people that can answer his question, which will be the state of New Jersey or the Woodbridge Township Zoning Board. Everything was done 100% according to the law here. There's no point in talking to people. Just call the zoning board and ask the question. Call the state and ask the question. Everything was done legally in the past several months, and now we have a digital, a digital billboard that we can make more advertising rather than one. 